anaerobic threshold is not VO2 max. So if you're aiming for VO2 max, why prescribe training intensity based on aerobic threshold? So another better way, maybe, way to look at it is, you know, build training zones, build training zones which are dedicated to a specific physiological system. Basically, in this interval training, there's four aspects to it. How high is the intensity in the on phase? How long is the on phase? And then the other questions are how long is the recovery? So, and uh, what is intensity of the recovery? recovery? So four aspects, that's what we're going to talk about today. The aim of the training or the intensity that we use in a certain training uh, it's normally derived, if you also look into scientific studies or you look, look at different sports, on the maximum capacity, the maximum performance of a specific system. And then in endurance sports, it has become very popular to have training intensities prescribed on the anaerobic threshold. And this is something that we're going to talk about a little bit here today, because that's not necessarily what you would really want, um, or there are some, some downsides to it, especially when it comes to interval training. Sprinter type of athlete has um, the anaerobic threshold, maximum active steady state, FTP, ventilatory threshold, whatever you want to call it, further away, percentage-wise speaking, from the VO2 max. So obviously what happens if you prescribe a training based on anaerobic threshold for those two athletes, how much you actually trigger your VO2 max will be vastly different. Here's an example for that. Same here, you can see the aerobic and anaerobic energy contribution for any um, distance, or duration in cycling and speed or power output in cycling here. It's again an example from running. So you can have the software calculate that for you before you prescribe a specific effort to your athlete. When you get rid of the lactate, you automatically get rid of the hydrogen ion, which means getting rid of the lactate is an indicator, as a marker for getting rid of your muscle acidosis. What is important to understand is that the lactate that is produced here in the middle part is actually entering the aerobic metabolism. That is still for many people something that might be a little bit new, that lactate is actually a fuel. It's a, it's a super fuel actually. For so you have, so to speak, the gross combustion, the maximum ability of a muscle to combust lactate and the gross production, which, and then it's, very helpful and interesting to look at two different parts of this curve. This gray area shows basically how much additional lactate the athlete could combust. And then this purple area, right of the threshold domain, so basically showing you um, how much lactate would accumulate. Best way or easiest way to, to work with that is to, is to transform that into another graph, which is what we're looking at. The so recovery of the lactate below threshold and the accumulation rate of lactate above threshold. And especially this recovery rate is what you can use now to decide on the recovery phase, how long and which power output or running speed. I'm going to give you two examples. We start with looking at this purple box. You produce, or the athlete produces one millimeter of lactate per minute. If you multiply it by four minutes, you arrive at four minimums, but, and then it's relatively simple. You pick the uh, value from the gray curve, in this case, 0 0.6, and you just divide four by 0 0.6, and then you get the time. How much time would be needed to fully recover or to fully combust this much lactate? This can be different, even though athletes may have the same anaerobic threshold domain. You can see that this touchdown point here 
right? For the dashed line, so the dashed line and the solid line are now two different athletes. You can see that the, that the um, touchdown point here, which is the anaerobic threshold, is at approximately the same power. But the rate of accumulation and the rate of recovery is vastly different. Going back again, bringing it full circle to what we said in the beginning, even though you don't have you have the same threshold, doesn't necessarily mean you should use the same interval trainings or same intensities.